everybody. Fran here, RamsandEliteFitness.com. RamsandEliteFitness.com. You are listening to the Health Force Podcast. I'm trying to give you a dose of scientific reality at all times. And today we have an episode highly actionable. But first, I got a comment. Oh my gosh, what a beautiful day here in Pittsburgh, PA. A um, little cloudy. A little cloudy, but the temperature is perfect for me. 60 degrees. Um, just shorts, t shirt weather, comfortable. Uh, not overbearingly hot, not overbearingly humid. Absolutely wonderful. And today we're driving in the car, recording the podcast. Got places to go, people to see. Business as per usual at Ramsley Fitness. At Ramsley Fitness. Um, but again, this, today's podcast, super pumped to give it to you guys. Um, the first thing I want you guys to do, though, however, 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 the first thing I want you guys to do is go back, if you have not yet done so, listen to episode. Health Force episode number 35 on forming the best diet. Episode 35. It's going to be a great precursor to today's podcast. Um, That's going to give you three direct action steps on how to start eating in a way that's going to uh, lead you towards your goals, whether that's fat loss or muscle gain. Uh, That that podcast is a must listen because today's podcast is going to essentially build off of that. Uh, Today, we're going to be discussing how to measure progress, whether that be fat loss, uh, weight loss, and um, we're going to give you some real practical methods to use, and it's going to give you a better sense of what we call scientific reality. Uh, there's this thing in fitness where people are marketing products that absolutely suck. Uh, they're giving you gimmicks, scams, you name it, in order for you uh, to buy their products. Okay, There's a ton of them out there. And these people are completely devoid of any sort of scientific reality. They're, they're trying to paint a picture of an environment that is not true. And, you know, oh, my God, there's toxins everywhere. Oh, we're so allergic to everything. Our bodies is pretty much dying. And if you don't, if you don't buy my drink, you're going you're gonna to get cancer in three years. Look, I, you know, it's all about sensationalism. And uh, marketing ruins everything, especially bad marketing. As a business owner, I can respect certain certain aspects of marketing, and it's really just a value proposition. You're essentially trying to tell somebody why they should listen to you or buy your service or uh, a product. But bad marketing is just gimmicky, salesy, snake oil like, and it's annoying for everybody involved. So that you know that oftentimes leads to consumers and clientele who are starting to have a murkier picture of the actual setting and environment in which, in which they're in. So. There's a lot to do with that around like weight loss, okay? And what happens is individuals step on the scale every single day. They look at that number, and that number determines their happiness uh, or sadness for the day. And that that is a, a process in which is going to lead you down a rabbit hole. Uh, it's going to be very, very scary and dark, uh, and a uh, yo-yo type of environment where you you know you're, you're some days will be really, really high, some days will be really, really low, and it's all, all based upon this uh, straightforward approach that whatever that number says, that's how much fat you have, okay? Like, it's trying to give you the perception of your fat mass. And all that that scale really does is give you your perception of weight. And there's a lot of factors that go into weight. Muscle mass, water retention, or your water hydration levels, uh, carbohydrate storage, and yes, fat. So you see, with all these different factors, it's not as easy as just stepping on the scale, and if it went down, good, and if it went up, bad. And I know too many of us are getting stuck in that pattern where you've got to get on that scale and you need that number to go down, or else your day is shot, or your motivation is killed, and you you know, you know feel like the worst person in the world, that you must have cheated somewhere and did the wrong thing. And instead, I'd like to give the Ramsley Fitness approach to measuring your goals, measuring your progress, and how to bring some sanity back to your life. Uh, bring the happiness in for a as a constant, which means that it does not sway or falter based upon that number on the scale. And it's giving you the dose of reality that you need. It's not based in gimmick. It is not sell. I'm not selling a damn thing. Except for information. I'm just going to give it to you for free on the podcast. And that's the best kind of information. One that's given from the heart. One that's given uh, with the intention to just provide people with value. Value, value, value is the name of the game. It is the name of the Health Force podcast. And it is why I get so excited um, to do this every single week. Come out with a new episode. Find a topic that is, that's going to be super relatable to the people, to the audience that listen. And um, let's hop into it, all right? Let's get into measuring your success. And it's going to be in the context specifically for a fat loss diet or a fat loss goal. 
but it's going to have broad uh, application across across all spectrums of fitness. I want to start by bringing up the scale. The scale, uh, it seems to be polarized in my industry where you have advocates for it that uh, tend to be the general population, tends to be the clientele, tends to be the customers, and they tend to do it on their own because they feel it's the best form of feedback. They've been told that, you know, they have to weigh in, they got to, uh, you know, that's what the scale is for. So the average person tends to view that as a pariah or as this, uh, the ultimate, the ultimate feedback tool. That's on one end of the spectrum. The other end of the spectrum are fitness professionals, like uh, in positions of myself, where we're personal trainers or we're health professionals, fitness professionals, uh, fitness consultants. And there's those of us that completely demonize the scale and tell you it's completely worthless and you should never get on again. Now, as often that we're finding uh, throughout our podcast history here, if you've, if you've been with us since episode one or you've listened to our past episodes, you're starting to figure out things um, in, in regards to black and white and how it's never black and white. It's both. It's both black and white. Polar opposites play a ton. So on one hand, yes, scales are very misleading and should be taken with a grain of salt. But on the other end, They are not worthless. They play a role. I'm going to teach you how to properly use that scale to your benefit. Okay, here's the deal. When you weigh in, you should weigh in one time a week. One time a week. And it should be done in the same circumstances every single week. So if that's Wednesday morning before work at 5 a.m. with no clothes on, then every single weigh-in needs to be Wednesday 5 a.m. with no clothes on. The day that you switch and say, well, this week I'll do Saturday at 5 p.m. with my all my clothes on and my Ugg boots on, that is the day where your results are going to become skewed and be subjected to a a plethora of variables in which almost certainly your your weight is going to seem like it increased. So the best thing you could do is try to be as constant as possible with the uh, the surroundings in which you do this to uh, minimize variables playing a role in making a difference. So that's the first piece of info. Now here's how you do it. When you begin a new workout program or a new diet plan, or just in general if you're just beginning on this this process of measuring your success, you're going to do it before you begin a plan, right? That's the best time to do it. That way you can ultimately measure the effectiveness of your diet plan and your and your uh, weightlifting plan or your exercise programming. So in the beginning, I advise doing it before you start. So if, you, if you're going to start on Monday, it's the first day you're going to the gym, it's the first day you're going to implement some new nutrition guidelines for yourself, I would do it Monday morning before anything has a chance to set in. That way you're getting a baseline. Your first weigh-in is always baseline. What that means is this is where your starting point is, and that is it. It is not a determination of good. It is not a a determination of bad. I want that to get into your mindset right now. Your first weigh-in needs to have the mindset of a guideline, or sorry, not a guideline, a baseline. It is your first measurement. What we are seeking to do from here on out is every time we weigh in, or most times we weigh in, is to look for improvements on the baseline. Okay? So I don't care if you're 400 pounds 35% 35% body fat, that is your baseline. It is what it is. You cannot afford to get into the dumps mentally about it or be beat up emotionally about it or feel super bad about it. Come to grips with it, acknowledge it, and let's go. It's go time. So get on the scale, weigh it. The next thing you do, with that number, jot it down somewhere. I don't care if you put it in, into an application on your phone. You do good old pens on paper. But you've got to got to make a note of it. Put the date, put the time, and put the weight. The next thing I want you to do is I want you to take off all of your clothes, or do it in a uh, if you're a female sports bra and undies, or if you're a guy in your boxers. I, I don't care. Take photos of yourself, or have your significant other do it for you. And uh, I would highly recommend storing these photos not on Snapchat. Uh, don't send them out, but have them somewhere where only you are going to be able to view them. These are going to be your visual guidelines as to, as to your success. Your visual guidelines. Visual guidelines are big. They play. They, they're big time. 
And the person, and, and, and here's a little tip, tip on the side. For visual aids, if you have a significant other, a boyfriend or a girlfriend, a husband or a wife, they're going to be the one that's going to be able to look at your photos and probably notice the biggest difference. You see your own body every single day. Your mind uh, doesn't pick up the subtle changes every day. But if you show somebody who is not yourself and you show them week, weekly photos, they're going to notice a lot more changes than you are. So just because you don't you don't get to notice it or you don't see it doesn't mean that they're lying to you. All right, But take photos just from the front and from the side would be good. If you have somebody else that can take pictures for you, uh, you can take one from, be, from behind yourself as well. That way you have all three angles. What you're looking on here is it's for body shape. Body shape. And what you're able to do is look at those areas that, that you know you hate on yourself now or that you know are a problem. Stomach, love handles, legs, thighs, calves, arms. You're able to visually see that. And as long as you're taking the picture at the same background, do, do again, do the same way that, that you do it on the scale. Same place, same time, same background, same distance away from the camera. Keep everything constant. You're going to be able to notice size changes in your arm, on your legs, wherever. You're going to be able to see it. And that's critically important because you're going to use that information alongside of the scale weight to start to determining your body composition uh, in regards to fat percentages and how that's changing. Okay? The next thing I want you to do, the next thing I want you to do is I want you to grab some sort of tape measure. Think about your grandma's sewing kit from back in the day, and they've got this... Almost, it looks like a. It's not. It's not yarn, but it's a. It's made of like plastic. It's really cheap, and you can kind of like you know unravel it. It's a tape measure, right? A tape measure, and you're gonna wrap that around yourself in some in some specific areas, uh, and you're gonna write down that measurement in inches. Okay, you ready for it? Here they are. The big ones. The big ones are waist. I like to do the abdomen, which I. Just put on the belly button and go around. And then I like to do hips. Those are the three big ones. Now, if you're super ambitious or you want as much data as possible, you can do your arm, you can do your leg, your thigh, you can do your calf. You can get very creative with it. But I highly recommend the three of waist, abdomen, and hips since that tends to be the most problem area for most people for fat storage. And that's where... Uh, most uh, fat receptors tend to be, which is why you usually have an increase of storage there. Joke's on you. Genetics is a piece of crap sometimes, and uh, it plays a role as to what location in your body fat stores, which is why some of us store it in our hips and butt and arms and others store it elsewhere. Again, you can have a friend help you. Your significant other can come in and, and do the measurements for you. If you're unsure as to what the waist and hips and the abs measurement actually is, uh, Google it, folks. All right? Look it up. Google it. It will show you exactly what line, but it's just, the waist tends to be the skinniest part of your upper body, so kind of right underneath your rib cage where it, uh, you'll, you'll notice it cut in. That's where you'll want to place the tape measure, go around your body. The abdomen, I, you know, you'll see a couple different references. I, for, for consistency, I like to just go on the belly button. Put the tape on the belly button and go around the body. Take that measurement. And then the hips tend to be the widest portion of uh, the midsection slash lower body. So you have the you will have yourself turned sideways. Look at your butt where it sticks out the farthest, and go ahead and place that tape measure around your butt. Now with those three measurements, you're going to get different numbers. And every week you will you can remeasure and notice changes up or down. And that, again, that'll give us clues as to our body composition. Now. Here's the important part. Week to week, you may or may not notice any changes. And we live in a, in a culture right now, a society, where our fitness industry fake experts, our pseudo-experts, our scam artists, our fanatics, they preach to us about short-term successes. 30-day fix! Oh, my 10-day cleanse! Oh, my 3-day results! Booty boot camp plus! They are obsessed sickening, it's just disgusting, obsessive behavior about short-term success. And I'm here to tell you, throw that out the damn window. You need to focus on the big picture. I'm talking eight weeks. I'm talking six months. I'm talking one-year changes. And if you're somebody right now that goes, oh, my friend, I can't 
wait a year. I don't have the patience. All right. I'm telling you right now, if that's you, you're setting yourself up for failure right from the get-go. If you are not patient, if you are not consistent, if you can't get into the mindset of scientific reality and what it truly takes to lose weight in the big picture, and you want 20-day results or you want three-day results or one-day or one-week results, you will never be successful with your fitness goals. Got it? So either tell yourself, too bad, this is what has to happen, or come to grips that you're not going to be successful. Now, here's what to do with the numbers and the feedback that you get. If you're on an effective and proper exercise program and nutrition guidelines or benchmarks or macro splits, your weight on the scale may go up and it may go down. Let me explain. Specifically, if you're doing a weight training program and you're consuming moderate to high amounts of protein, you're going to build lean tissue, a.k.a. muscle. Now, when you add muscle, muscle weighs more than fat does. It weighs more. So if you take a similar picture of fat versus a similar picture and similar size of muscle and you compare them side by side, the muscle is going to weigh more on a scale than does the fat. Okay? So it's entirely possible to gain muscle and lose fat at the same time. So you may, for instance, gain one pound of muscle in a week and lose one pound of fat in a week. And again, these are hypothetical examples. So your scale weight is going to show zero change. But what's going to change is going to be your pictures, your visual aids, and your measurements done with the tape measure. Those will change. So I hope you're connecting the dots now, right? In your head, you're starting to see why I'm having you do multiple forms of measurement. Multiple forms of measurement. So if somebody's adding muscle and losing fat, your scale may either drop slightly, it may say the same, but the real success, the real visual, that, that those visual aids, both the pictures and the uh, tape measure, those are going to demonstrate how you're progressing. So in eight weeks, it's, it's entirely possible for your weight, let's say your initial weigh-in is 150 pounds. Your weigh-in after eight weeks could be 151 pounds. And you're going to sit there and traditionally think, oh my God, I screwed up, I gained weight, I'm such a loser. But if you're somebody that has taken my advice today and have taken the photographs from week one, you've done your measurements from week one, that'll translate on to week eight measurements and week eight photos, and you're going to be able to pick that up very, fairly easily. And that's what I want to stress today, folks. It is not about some number on the scale that you got to weigh 120 pounds, you've got to weigh 160 pounds. There is no weight measure that is perfect for you. I am imploring you today to think about your fitness goals as body composition, the makeup of your muscle versus your fat. And if your fat percentage numbers can get below 15% for men and below 20% for females, you are living a very active and healthy lifestyle. You will be living a very active and healthy lifestyle. So the biggest takeaway today is that you can understand your composition, the way your body is built, the muscle that you have, the fat that you have, that relationship is far more important than any scale measurement that you're going to get on and weigh in at, oh my God, I gained three pounds or I lost five pounds, yay! Because let me give you the flip side and the very, very sad story. Sad story real quick. There are individuals right now, beach body coaches, that do not understand body composition. They don't get proper fat loss, proper weight loss. They don't understand it. They think sell some damn supplement and in three days their their scale goes down. I must have lost three pounds of fat. We haven't even talked about water in today's podcast. We haven't even mentioned it. Water retention and how that fluctuates. So setting that aside, they would have you believe that any sort of scale loss is strictly fat loss. Not the case. We also have beach body coaches that because they don't they do not do weightlifting in the gym, because they don't do a strength training regimen, they don't do resistance bands. They just hop around and dance and try to insist that, oh my God, this is so fun. I am having so much fun because that's their approach and because they drink overpriced shakes that are nothing more 
than carbohydrate drinks, they don't change their body composition. In general, they don't change their body composition. They may lose 30 pounds on the scale. They may lose 30 pounds on the scale. But they've now lost a combination of muscle tissue, water weight, and fat tissue. All three. They may have started the program looking like a pear with fat mass on the lower body and a skinnier upper body build. They may lose 20 pounds, and now they look like a skinnier pear. But they have not shaped their body composition. They have not changed their body shape. That, in my opinion, is a failure. That should not be an outcome. They have certainly lowered their scale weight, but they have done nothing for their body composition. Now, when I say nothing, I'm speaking in generalities. I'm speaking for the most part. Don't go to the extremes. Don't be one of those people that tries to nitpick facts. But in general, most beach body participants, most beach body coaches that go and try to insist upon their weight loss, they are losing muscle mass along that, which is why you, you get this look of skinny fat where somebody on the scale could be completely within their BMI. Somebody could weigh, a male could weigh 190 pounds or 175 pounds, and for their height, that could be great, and yet they're still carrying fat mass, excessive fat mass around their, their stomachs. Females could lose 10, 15, 20, 30 pounds on Shakeology, and they could convince you that it's so great for them, they feel so much better. And yes, they may be smaller, smaller than they were, but they still look like a skinny fat person. They still are carrying excessive fat tissue. Their arms are still flabby and do not have muscle on them. And so I ask you, is that what you want? Do you just want to be a smaller shape of yourself? Or do you truly want to reshape yourself, get your fat as low as you can get it, being reasonable, and adding toning muscle? And look healthy, look athletic, look in shape, look fit. That's what you have to ask yourself. And my process that I've listed out for you today on how to measure for that success is going to put you on the path towards achieving true body composition outcomes. That, that is exactly what we do at Ramsley Fitness. We do the same thing with our clients, folks. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you this information on the podcast because you can implement this on your own. This is something that you can do. This is something that you could surely do. So again, listen to episode 35 about how to form a good diet for yourself. And now with this episode podcast, knowing how to measure and track yourself, you are light years, light years. I can't, I can't stress this enough. You are murdering other people and how they're approaching fitness in terms of the general population or Shakeology coaches or Shakeology, you know, people that do that or Beachbody or... Uh, the you know your your friend down the street that goes to these dance classes and they shake their butt the whole time and trying to lose weight and and you're way ahead of the game, way ahead of the game. I hope you find this of value. If you have, please give us a comment. Shoot us an email, Rams and Elite Fitness at gmail dot com. Find us on our big three social media right now: Facebook and Instagram, Rams and Elite Fitness. We we love to interact with people. Comment on a photo, d- DM us. Very, very happy to talk, to help you out, give you some further tips, to exchange some messages, to hear success stories. And our Snapchat, Ramsden F. Snapchat, Ramsden F. One last one. We have some big plans over the summer for our YouTube channel. We will be shooting a documentary-like uh, TV series, which will be going inside our company. So you're going to be able to see some of the daily activities uh, of us training clients, uh, of myself uh, shadowing, essentially, and going to see business deals and and meeting clients for the first time, doing consultations, uh, see my my day to day, see how how I'm working on business things. So if you're an, if you're an entrepreneur, um, you may find that super in, intriguing and uh, uh, entertaining for yourself. So again, you subscribe to our YouTube page, Rams and Elite Fitness. Okay, folks. Hope you found this to be super positive for your life, and I hope you start implementing these things ASAP. Uh, you know, these are things that can help immediately. And uh, I love the fact that there's those of you out there that after, upon hearing of this tomorrow are going to be getting up in the morning and weighing in naked on your scale. And you're going to have a completely different perspective uh, about how to measure your success. And I'm so pumped about that. All right. Look forward to seeing you all next week. Can't wait. Super pumped. Enjoy your day, folks.